unbelievable. A nice day finally that even I can tolerate. It's in the high 50s, maybe low 60s today. And it looks like it's going to be a stellar week as well. So very excited to get outside. Now, as far as today's concerned, it's quiet. It's about outdoor projects, the spring ones that carry into the summer and so on. But most importantly, we try to get these done ASAP as much as we can, as much as the weather allows. But first off, while I'm here at the chicken area, is the chicken area. It is just a muddy mud pit here with all the moistness, with all the rain and snow and normal weather we have at this time of year, but it's getting out of hand. The chickens have, you know, scratched it out a bit, so there's not much going on. Um, yeah, I really want to get some more chips up in here. I need, I want to elevate this whole area because it is somewhat of a runoff area as well because we're coming up a mountain there and just all the water just <laughs> just puddling everywhere. So I need to get a lot of wood chips in here <clears throat> and some straw. I'd like to grow, you know, more greens for them in here. Um, a slightly less invasive project is getting the netting up higher. Um, I've got some bamboos that I'm going to stake up so the net isn't hanging down so much. It doesn't bother them, but it's bothering me. Also on the list is getting the tank cleaned out. I overwintered it. May or may not have been a huge mistake. I don't know if we possibly cracked the funnel there. Hopefully not. But we're getting some pink algae growing in there along with the green one. So we got to clean that up. And then obviously the chicken coop. It's March now. So I'm going to give it a couple of weeks and then we got to do a big clean out of the chicken coop. And March is the perfect time for us because that'll give us enough time to put it in the beds that we want to put it in and have it break down um, enough not to burn off any plants we transplant. We also want to get the roosting situation taken care of, seal that off, because that's where they're roosting right now, and uh, make them some higher up ones because they don't all get along so well, right? gentlemen i have three roosters right now which hasn't been an issue as far as the noise they make so we're holding on to our third rooster the little uh, runt over there that gets bothered the most because he's the youngest but he'll figure it out or he'll be sent away or or we'll send away the other one actually because he's got nice coloring that we want to preserve and he might be a green or a blue rooster egg type layer thingy. <laughs> anyway, on the whole, the garden needs to be revamped. We need soil put where soil has eroded. We need to weed. We need to cover crop a little bit. I'm going to try to, like where there's chickweed right there, all over, if I take, when I take that out, I want to replace it with clover and leave the clover and interplant with the clover and not worry so much about, you know, perfectly clean soil and then just the plants I planted. I want, I want weeds per se in there that are not taking away from the plants I'm planting but it's gonna keep other weeds that I don't want there to be there. Also, we need to build up the trellis system that I'm gonna do, like a lower and lean type. So that's, yeah, that's a project for maybe April or May before the tomatoes go in. It's gonna be a taller, taller stakes and then um, a solid electrical conduit PVC type pipe across 20 feet span. Or 10 and 10 and then string coming down and that is what I'll use to 
have the tomatoes climb up on and we'll see how that goes i was just going to do one layer of it but i think i'm going to end up going with two maybe yeah we'll see <laughs> Over here is a project I started in the fall, but, or maybe more wintery actually. And then the weather took over, so I didn't get to finish. But the voles have found this bed. So I dug out all the dirt, put them in grow bags. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix this. I gotta, well, first of all, it's sinking cause it's on a hill. So it's very, very tilted if you can't tell. And then I'm gonna put mesh on the bottom and around the sides to keep, to keep the voles from destroying the plants I put in there. And then, and then hopefully we'll have a solid crop in that space. Now, a great project that I was hoping would have a better Better outcome is this, my little low tunnel situation here. And yeah, I'm not really sure what to do, what to make of it right now. The plan was to put my starts here and, you know, winter, winter so generally in more or less, but the vole have discovered this space, which makes sense because it's you know protected no oh, there goes one it's a protected space and it's nice and cozy so they've pretty much taken out i don't even remember what i was growing there but the time is hanging on for dear life not much going on there life-wise it's still alive in some spaces but a lot of it has died back and it was a pretty pretty flourishing little bush there so putting any transplants in here is kind of maybe not the best idea because then they'll just get eaten and I can't afford to lose these transplants after I've plant I've had them growing for so long. I mean, mainly I'm talking about the onions and the artichokes and there's only so many of those. I'm, I don't think they'll touch the onions, but the artichokes definitely. Then I also don't want to put any any of the brassicas in here because they'll definitely take those out well in the long run it doesn't matter because <laughs> my husband has come to his senses and has agreed to this to build me a greenhouse on this wall so it's going to be this is the south wall so this is not going to be a summer you know greenhouse because that would just those plants are going to fry in the summer but most of the time this is a great spot the house will serve for radiant heat, much as this, the reason why I put that there. And I think, you know, he saw me doing that and he came to his senses. But that's a project that requires digging out these bushes, shrubs, um, my lavender, and at least one of the boxwoods has to go. And I'm trying to keep it a smaller space, but my husband has other ideas. But to me, four by six is plenty of space, but we could go six by eight. I just didn't want it to jut out too much from the house. Cause there's like a natural, not natural, but somebody put these stones in, in and then it comes into the house a bit. So that's four feet right currently. And six feet would bring it out, you know, so it would mean moving the stones, which these are not, these are in the dirt, like really good. You do not want to mess with these. I tried pulling these up and no, sorry, Bob. So I would prefer that the greenhouse use that as part of its foundation. So keep it to the, the four feet footprint. And then just pretty much as long as I want to avoid, avoid the vent because the, the lint that's coming out of there you know, I don't want that in my plants, but we could always, if we do put it in the greenhouse, then we could tube the vent out of the greenhouse. So it'd be pretty much sitting in between, if it gets to eight feet between these two, 
ridges, this is ridges, the ridge lines of, of, of the house. Which means we got to refill this hole back up again, which is great since I spent all that time digging it out. But luckily, I saved some of the crappier soil. Where is it? The, the bottom layer, the clay, is right there. So I can put that back. And then when I dug up the strawberries back there, I also saved a whole bunch of clay off to the side. So we can use that to fill this back in. And then we have... A lump of, of pebbles and then I can put mesh in the bottom to keep the voles from coming in and then I would be much more satisfied that it will be somewhat rodent, rodent proof so that's the plan for this space and finally the grow bags here have to be resituated um, this is the oil line so when they get we get oil delivery, I don't want them, not on purpose, but it will happen disturbing the plants that will be growing here. It's not a problem in the winter, but once the plants come up, then I don't want them getting knocked over. And I don't want to put pressure on the delivery people to be wary of those plants. So I got to move those really heavy bags somewhere else, which, yeah. Um, I got to fill this up some. This is where the onions are going to go, and it's a little bit too low for them for the time being there's not a lot of sun getting in where the container is shading most of it so that is the hashtag spring outdoor project 2024 video for you i have many more that i didn't cover but those are all you know regular old projects you gotta do regardless so you'll see those when you see those make sure to enjoy all these beautiful days we have ahead but winter's not over, so pace yourself. Build up the stamina. A lot of us have been couch potatoes all winter, me included. And yeah, don't don't overdo it. Don't want to wreck your whole summer just for the few days of spring. All right, I'll talk to you all again soon.